Shalom Israel. And when I mean Israel, I'm talking about the black, Hispanic, and native Indians. The Lord's 54th annual Passover is going down again this year, sundown, April 1st at 500 South Salisbury Street in Raleigh, North Carolina at the Downtown Conventional Center. It's got enough room for all of us. The Lord's 54th annual Passover. Last year, brothers and sisters showed up from all over the world rocking ancient garments and glorious apparel in order to serve the Most High in Christ. Now, it's that time again. Commander General Johanna's putting out the decree for all brothers and sisters to show up sundown, April 1st, in Raleigh, North Carolina. Join us at the Sheridan in Raleigh, the hotel right downtown. It's at 421 South Salisbury. The Passover is right up the block at the convention center. Literally within walking distance. Make sure you pull up. Make sure that you do your due diligence because rooms are going fast and they are limited this weekend. You understand? We have months in advance of preparation. Do not wait till the last minute to get your room. The Lord's 54th annual Passover, Saturday, April 1st, in Raleigh, North Carolina. Join us there. Send the curses to them enemies. Because America has made God into a joke, man. America has made God into an absolute joke. You know what I'm saying? They, let me tell you something, man. The Christian church has taught black people to fear the IRS more than they fear God. You understand? Know you respect the IRS more than you respect God. If the IRS says you owe one thousand one hundred sixty-two dollars and thirty cents, you know what you're gonna pay them? $1,162.32. You understand? Whatever you say you owe, you will never go to the IRS and say, well, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect, Mr. IRS, man. You understand? God, God, man, that made God into a mockery. You could give, the excuses you give God, you would not give the IRS. You would not give, give the judge. You understand? You don't commit a crime and tell the judge nobody's perfect. You know what you do? You throw yourself in the mercy of the judge. You know what I'm saying? But God has to hear you're not perfect. Man, give me, give me, give me what I asked for. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. Do what? Be not deceived. Don't let these Christians lie to you, man. Do not let these Christians lie to you. Be not deceived. Go ahead. God is not mocked. God's what? Not mocked. Don't mock God, man. Don't play with God's name. God is the almighty God. I mean, there's nobody above him. You fear him. Keep reading. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Go ahead, drop that. Give me Mark chapter 12. You understand me? God is not going to be mocked, man. You fear God. You understand? The Christian church has made God into a joke. They made God weak. They made God into your mom. That's what God is to, to you now. The Christian church has turned God into your mom. Every time you get in trouble, your mom hugs you and says, it'll be okay. You understand? But guess what? God is not your mom, man. God is a father. See how the, see how your father deals with you versus how God or your mom deals with you. You understand? Your father, if you get, if you get called right now and tell your father, hey, dad, I'm in jail, your father's going to say, leave him there. Leave him there. Your mom's going to come running and crying and telling the police officer he's a good kid. Your father don't play those games, man. God is a father. You understand what I mean? God is a father. And here's the beautiful thing about it. God sends us out here to clear up all the miscommunications. Give me, uh, uh, give me Mark chapter 12, verse 26. Watch this. Mark 12, 26. This is the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 26. And as touching the dead, that they rise. Have ye not read in the book of Moses? Have you not read in the book of Moses? Go ahead. How in the bush God spake unto him. When God was speaking to Moses in the bush, go ahead. Saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. I am the God of Abraham and God of Isaac. What's the point? Watch this. Go ahead. And the God of Jacob. Go ahead. Chapter uh, Salakia, verse 27. He is not the God of the dead. He is what? Not the God of the dead. They say black man, Hispanic man, Native American Indian man. You have advantage over all the people on the earth. Read that part again. He's what? He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. The 
God of the what? The living. He's the God of the living. You understand what I mean? And I'm going to tell you this. Every other nation, right? Every other people, every other religion has what? Dead prophets. They have, all their prophets are dead. That's why there's all this confusion. They're trying to decipher what they're talking about. Because Muhammad is dead. You understand? All the prophets of all the nations are dead. But God is the God of what? The living. Let me tell you something, black man. Your prophets are right in front of you. We can clear out any miscommunications. You understand what I mean? We're not confused. We're not trying to worry about what Muhammad said. We're right here. God's, God's prophets are right before you. You understand me? And man, do we need him today. Read again. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. You therefore greatly err. Mean what? These Christians are in, uh, in error. They don't know what they're talking about. That's why we got to come out here, man, and, sp and spread the truth about God. You understand? Know because they don't turn the truth into a lie. Give me Jeremiah 28. I'm going to show you something, man. I'm gonna now, as we pull this scripture, Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8, I want you to think about the message of the Christian church. I want you to think about what they want you to believe. All this love and forgiveness, right? But here's what God said in the book of Jeremiah, um, chapter 28, verse 8. Read. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28, verse 8. And by the way, Jeremiah was a prophet of God, a messenger of God. This is what he said. The prophets that have been before me Jeremiah is speaking here. He said, the prophets that were before me, who? Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You know what I mean? The prophets before me, Daniel. The prophets before me, and before the old, and before the old, prophesied both against many countries. They what? Against many countries. The prophets before me prophesied against many countries. Go ahead. And against great kingdoms. And against what? Great kingdoms of war. Of what? Of war. Of what? Of war. The prophets before me prophesied of war. What's the Christian church talking about today? Peace. Love. Something's off. Read that again. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries. Against what? Many countries. Prophesied in many countries. You understand what I mean? They prophesied against Egypt. They prophesied against Babylon. They prophesied against uh, Assyria. What made you, th if, if God is not partial, right? Christians have to say, God is not partial. Let me ask you a question. If God is not partial, then why should America's reward be different than Egypt's? Why should America's judgment be different from Babylon if God is not partial? If both of them have slaves, why is America's judgment where well, everybody's forgiven? But Egypt had to die. The first one of every Egyptian had to die. There's something wrong. Read again. The prophets that have been before me, prophets before me, and before thee of old, prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil. Of war and evil. That's what the prophets have to say, man. You understand? Let me ask you a question. Do you think the people love what they were saying? Do you think everybody went to Jeremiah and said, you know, you're saying something heavy here. We like what you're saying. No. Because it was a judgment against the country. You understand? And nothing has changed here. I mean, we're going to prophesy against this evil land, man. Don't never forget what happened to your people in this land. The, the whole goal of the Christian church is to make you forget what happened to your forefathers. God did not forget. You understand? What happened to your, your great-grandmother? God did not forget. You understand? Actually, give me a Deuteronomy. Give me Deuteronomy uh, chapter 32. I'm going to show you something, man. You, you think God's going to let everything slide? God will not be just. I mean, I'm going to tell you something else. Everybody watches movies and watches TV, right? And there's always a conflict. And if there's not justice at the end of the conflict, guess what? You're not satisfied. It was a bad show. Right or wrong? If there was somebody who was, who was uh, kidnapped and raped and destroyed, and the, the person who kidnapped and went to court in the movie, and the judge said, you know what, all is forgiven, you would, you would flip out. You said, what, kind of, what the hell kind of show is this? I'm never watching this again. This is evil. Yeah, you think God's going to forgive America for what happened to right. blacks and Spanish never making in this year? Right. You lost your mind. That's how you mock God, man. Right. You question his judgment. His ability to judge right and wrong. And you want him to conform to your way of thinking versus do what's right. But God is different, man. God is not the God of the dead. 
God is a living God. You understand me? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Oh, I'm so lucky. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 39. This God, this is the God that they're trying to tell you is all love. Listen closely to what God says here. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he. That's how you know God's a black man. What black man says? I am he. Translation, I'm him. I'm him. You understand? That's God. I am him. I am he. Go ahead. And there is no God with me. And that's what? No God with me. Listen, the, God of, the God of Christianity is not with God. There's no other God with God. Go ahead. I kill and I make a lot. I what? I kill and I make a lot. I what? I kill and I make a lot. I'll tell you something, man. Nothing happens without God's okay. Everybody think God is beefing with some Satan and some somebody's chatting. Nobody's chatting with God, man. If if God is killing in your world, something's wrong. And that's what the Christian church don't want you to know. You understand? If you sick, you hear somebody's mom has cancer, something's wrong. Read again. I kill and I make a lie. I kill. I make a lie. That's what God said. Go ahead. I wound and I heal. I what? I wound and I heal. You hear somebody sick. Who did it? Who okayed it? You think the, the, the spirit realm is out of order, like things are just happening. No such thing. I wound, I heal. I decide these things. Keep reading. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. What? Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. I'll tell you right now, America, the Christian church cannot deliver you out of the hand of God. The Christian church cannot deliver you out of the hand of God. You understand what I mean? They are evil themselves. You understand? All they do, that God is this. Here's what's happening in the Christian church. And this, it makes sense why they want, um, they want forgiveness. It makes sense. You know why? Because that example I gave you earlier of that criminal who went to the judge and for, for molesting children, they are that criminal. So they would love to hear with for, you're forgiven for all the child molestation that's happening in that Christian church, man. You know how much child like all these, bro, all these brothers you see in jail, you see all these sisters you see on the streaming poles, they have one common story, man, the Christian church. The Christian church is, what, is the common denominator in what all the evil that's happened to them, man. But this is what God said. Keep reading. Verse 40. For I lift up my hand to heaven. I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. I what? I live forever. That doesn't mean he lived forever. He ain't going nowhere, man. You have a timeline. He don't. That's why people think that there's a, um, a statute of limitation on slavery. You understand? But the problem is God lives forever. He was there when that, ha when that happened to your great-grandfather and great-grandmother. He was there, and he's here today. All of it's going to be judged. You understand? Read it again. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. I live forever. Go ahead. Verse 41. If I wet my glittering sword, I wet my glittering sword. What does it mean to wet a sword? You ever see the samurai movies, and he starts to pull the sword out the shift? The out the sheath? That's wetting. That means you're pulling it out of his guard. Go ahead. And my hand take hold on judgment. I start to judge. I will render vengeance to my enemy. I will what? Render vengeance to my enemy. No, I will reward them. I will render vengeance to my enemies. He will render vengeance to his enemies, man. That's God. That's the God of the Bible. But they're trying to teach us that he is no, no longer this way. That he changed. You know what we're reading about? God's reputation. You understand? No matter what anybody tells you, you should be able to pull the scriptures and find his reputation. Right. I'll give you an example. If you go to the bank right now and you want to take a loan, what do they do? What do they do if you go to the bank and want to take a loan? They pull a credit check. Why? They want to know about your reputation. Do you pay back? I'm telling you, God pays back. God pays back for all the evil that happened on this earth, man. And we're going to read about it. Actually, you know what? Give me uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15. Give me 1 Samuel chapter 15. We're going to read about something that happened. I'm going to give you the backstory to it. This is when um, Moses was taking the Israelites out of Egypt, right? And they were walking out of Egypt. You know, it was a large crowd. And there was a nation called the Amalekites who attacked 
the weak that will be behind. You know, if you have a large group walking, the elderly, the weak, the defenses will be in the back. Well, that nation attacked them. This was happening in Egypt, when they were leaving Egypt. This was the Amalekites, right? 800 years later, when God was assigned a king, he, was, he, gave, he took King Saul and made him king over Israel. 800 years later. Now think about it. 800 years, guess what? The people who did that crime of attacking those people were no longer here, right? They were not here. But this is what God said to that king. This is first order he gave to that king. 800 years later, after they attacked the children of Israel. Get, read verse 1. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 1. This is, again, God's reputation on how he's dealt with oppression. You know what I'm saying? Don't listen to Christian church. You know what I mean? They're doing all the evil. Of course they want forgiveness. You understand? Know they don't want to change. They want to keep doing every lustful thing they could in there and still be forgiven. But this is God's reputation. This is what he, how he handled oppression. Go ahead. Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me. So Samuel is, is um, God's prophet. He's talking to Saul, the new king. Go ahead. The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people. So Saul's about to become king over Israel. Go ahead. Over Israel. Go ahead. Now therefore, hearken unto, Salakia, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Listen. Hearken means listen to the word of the Lord. So Saul said, listen to what God said. Go ahead. Verse 2. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which, uh, Salakia, Amalek did to Israel. Read it again. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. I remember that. I what? I remember. I what? I remember that which Amalek did to Israel. 800 years later, God says to Saul, you know what? I remember what happened back then. I remember what Amalek did to Israel when he was coming out. I remember. Why? Because I live forever. You understand me? I live forever. So I don't have to forget. I don't have to give passes. You understand? My reputation is on the line based on what happened back then 800 years ago. I have to give an answer. You understand? Keep reading. How he laid wait for the Salaki. How he laid wait for him in the way. How he what? Laid wait for him. How he ambushed him, man. I remember what he did 800 years ago. How he ambushed the Israelites. Go ahead. When he came up from Egypt. Go ahead. Verse 3. Now go and smite Amalek. Now go and what? Smite Amalek. What does it mean to smite, brother? What does it mean to smite? Who could tell me? To, to what? To strike, to kill. Go ahead. Go smite Amalek. Go ahead. And utterly destroy. And what? Utterly destroy. This is 800 years later, man. God is not giving a pass. You understand? You try to make God give a pass to us. Oh, slavery was so far ago. That was a long time ago. Number one, it was not 800 years ago. You understand? This is 800 years ago. Right? And this is what he said. Smite him. Go ahead. And utterly destroy all that they had. And spare them not, what? but slay both man and woman. And what? But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling. Who? Infant and suckling. God said, go over there and kill everybody, man. God said, go over there and kill everybody over what happened. Now, let me tell you something, man. The Amalekites would have loved Christianity. You understand? Because what does Christianity say? God forgives. The Malachi said, God is just going to forgive you. But here's what he said one more time. Utterly destroy all that they had and spare them not and, what? and slay both no, and, spare what? and spare them not. This is God talking, man, about a nation who attacked God's chosen people. He said, spare them not. You know why God had to say spare them not? Why does God have to say spare them not? He has to tell them spare them not. You know why? Because we're going to go over there and we're going to feel sorry. That's why oftentimes in the Bible, God has to tell the soldiers, do not let your heart feel sorry in order for his will to be done, man. You think God is playing with this nation? Let me tell you something, man. God is bringing a judgment here that you would never imagine based on what happened to your people, man. You know what I mean? If you don't have value for your people, guess what God does? You understand? If you don't have value, if we don't have value for our people, God still does. He loved that sister that was raped in the bushes, man. He loved that brother who was castrated. Right. He loved them. That's his chosen people. 
He didn't send me here to be raped, buck, buck broken by this devil man. He didn't send you here to be the poorest on earth. You understand what I mean? He didn't send you here to be the poorest on earth. But you are. And God has to take judgment on these people. ISUPK presents the 54th annual Feast of Unleavened Bread. Last year we did it big. This year is going to be way big, big, big. More brotherhood, more sisterhood, more UPK. On Sunday, April 2nd, 2023, we're going to be at 421 South Salisbury Street in Raleigh, North Carolina at the Sheraton Raleigh Hotel Ball. Ball. We call it all blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians to come join us. To your third aisle peephole, line for line is shit too easy. It's like a free throw. Mastered the game too early. This bitch is Remember, admission to the Passover is $200 per adult. That's $200 per adult. For more information, call 919-697-8257. Call 919-697-8257.